Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today's story is how one word can send you down the research rabbit hole. At least that's the case for me. I'm working on a story, I'm editing a story about Raphael Sems. And as I normally do, I fact check everything as I'm going along and I came across a quote that was taken from an interview with one of Sems's trusted lieutenants, John McIntosh Kell. You students of Confederate naval history will know that name very well. You will also know Raphael Sems, the famed raider of the Confederate vessels Sumter in Alabama. Anyway, this uh, word appears in a newspaper interview that Kell gave in 1884. And in the interview, it's a long, sprawling interview that takes up almost uh, more than a half page, I think, of uh, the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, one of the pages inside the April 6th, 1884 edition of the Atlanta Constitution. And Kell talks about his experience and he explains how it came to be that Sems decided to attack the Kearsarge. Now, it was fairly well known that the Kearsarge and Captain Winslow outpowered the Alabama and it was going to be a tough fight. And Kell, in this interview, discusses why uh, Sems made the decision. I want to read the relevant passage to you so you can see what I'm talking about here. And here we go. Take a seat, Mr. Kell, Sems reportedly said. Quote, I have sent for you to discuss the advisability of fighting the Kearsarge. As you know, the arrival of the Alabama at this port has been telegraphed to all parts of Europe. Within a few days, Cherbourg will be effectually blockaded by Yankee cruisers. It is uncertain whether or not we shall be permitted to repair the Alabama here, and in the meantime, the delay is not to our advantage. I think we may whip the Kearsarge, the two vessels being of wood and carrying about the same number of men and guns. Besides, Mr. Kell, Although the Confederate States government has ordered me to avoid engagements with the enemy's cruisers, I am tired of running from that dirty rag. So there you have the relevant passage. The story, the interview, by the way, of Kell was done by a special correspondent for the Atlanta Constitution. His name is Alfred Iverson Branham. His pen name was Wood Holt. So the story now you know, the story and now you know what Kell said. As I was fact checking, I didn't realize this in the beginning because I didn't have access to the original article that I just shared with you that I found on newspapers.com. My first search was a regular search on Google on the internet and all the references I found, the last part of that last sentence didn't say, I am tired of running from that dirty rag. It said, I am tired of running from that flaunting rag. Now, dirty is quite a bit different than flaunting. And I started scratching my head and I thought, oh boy, I'm gonna go down the research rabbit hole. So how did that original interview from Dirty Rag go to Flaunting Rag? Well, first I wanted to get a bit more familiar with the words themselves. So I looked up flaunting and the definition is to display something ostentatiously, especially in order to provoke envy or admiration or to show defiance. Could the word flaunting be applied to a flag? Could it be applied to the stars and stripes as it hung above the Kearsarge? Absolutely. But according to Cal, Sems used the term dirty. And of course, dirty 
in this context can mean unclean, soiled, or contaminated. It can also mean to describe an action, a behavior, or a situation that is morally or ethically questionable. So why did it change from dirty to flaunting? When did it change? How did all this happen? So I started doing some searching in Google Books and elsewhere, and the earliest reference I could find to the term flaunting, flaunting flag in this quote, appears in 1930. So the original interview happened in 1884, and it's now 1930, the first reference that I was able to find. So we're looking roughly 50 years after the reference, after that original interview by Branham, by Alfred Iverson Branham. So this 1930 reference is in a book, and the book is titled 290. That was the number of the Raider Alabama, 290, story of the sinking of the Alabama. Guess who the author was? Alfred Iverson Branham, Wood Holt, the guy who did the original 1884 interview. How was that? Why did that change happen? From 1930 on, flaunting rag is used in every book that I could find listed on Google Books. There is one exception and one exception that I could find. The author Stephen Fox in his 2000 book, Wolf of the Deep, also questioned flaunting versus dirty. Based on my understanding of what he wrote, he concluded that the term dirty was probably the most accurate term in this context. Why Branham revised the word from dirty to flaunting is unknown to me. It's his own interview. He literally changed his own words between 1884 and 1930. I have a hunch, and it's pure speculation, and it's really based on time. America had changed dramatically between 1884 and 1930. The animus that existed following the war and Reconstruction had mellowed somewhat, though it was still there, but it had mellowed. The period of reunification beginning after that original interview with Cal, that time in the early 1900s when Union states were giving back the captured Confederate battle flags, when meetings were beginning to happen between the veterans, 1913, famously at Gettysburg, when the Union, the grizzled old Union and Confederate veterans shake hands at Pickett's Charge, the establishment of a cemetery for Confederate soldiers in Arlington, all of this is part of that reunification period. And that reunification period is smack dab in the middle between the 1884 interview and the 1930 book, both by the same man. So that's a possible explanation, but hard to say for sure. Based on what I've learned, I would agree with Stephen Fox. Rag seems to be the most accurate term, probably because it appeared in the original interview and it might capture Semmes's upsetment and animus, or more accurately, Kell's recollection of what Sam's was feeling at the time. Of course, I don't think we could actually ever know exactly what Sam said because my read of Kell's quote in Branham's interview seems to feel like a, it's been summarized and boiled down. And of course, it's 20 years after Sam's uttered these pronouncements and there's other versions too. So I do think that rag is, dirty rag is probably the right term, but I'm still surprised that Branham, a journalist, changed it himself. So thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.